God body is simple. It means you see God when you look in the mirror and that the body of man is God and that there's no mystery God in the sky. You are God. And yep, we're on. Welcome to another episode of the uh, Anabolic Mind where we talk about health, wealth, prosperity, and how people integrate it into their lives. So uh, I'm very happy. I got one of my uh, favorite people on today, uh, my publicist and a publicist to many celebrities, a titan in her own right. I want you to hear her story, super motivational, and she's had a recent uh, fitness transformation at the same time. So without any further ado, welcome Barbara Sanchez. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for having me. You know, you're one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. I owe you a lot. You already Thank know you so that. much. Collaborate so, trainer in the world. So the Barbara and I, we've known each other for what, a year or something? About a year now. Yes. About, a, about a year. And I actually started training Barbara and, um, you know, uh, we started bartering services, but we'll get into that because that's an interesting thing where people can connect business wise. Sometimes they don't have the money to use someone else's services or they don't have the time or they find it more advantages to get to someone easier. Bartering is always a good job thing if you can find someone who's on your level. And that's why I'd love to barter with Barbara because she's as good as what she does as what as what I do. So it's always a pleasure to work with her. But before we get into that, um, give them give the people a background about yourself, uh, age if you feel like it, yeah, <laughs> your company, yeah. where you're from, how you came up, and um, I'll jump in after, right after that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Well, yeah, well, thank you for your kind words, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you know, my name is Barbara Sanchez, and you might know me as, you know, the publicist, but I'll, I also do a lot of uh, social activism, uh, entrepreneurship, you know, um, philanthropic work, you know, I give uh, money to a lot of charities as well, like such as, you know, people that um, support this kind of like charities like domestic violence, you know, against domestic violence, obviously, because I'm a domestic violence survivor myself. And I have represented all of probably all of your favorite rappers by now. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Right. And influencers, obviously, um, you know, actors, actresses, you know, things like that. And uh, I've been doing publicity for about 16 years now. It's been a long time. I feel old. So, uh, but, you know, I don't look it. Thank God. <laughs> I, don't look, I don't look that old. You're in the gym. But, You're in the gym. Yes. Thanks to Mark. I, you know, I keep young and healthy. Uh, and it helps me. It helps me with my sanity, too, because Lord Jesus, Lord knows I need it. Um, but, yeah, I've been doing this for quite, quite, a, quite a bit of time. And, uh, and I'm very proud of the work because I, you know, I, I was born and raised in Mexico City, came here to the States when I was 15 years old, didn't know English at all, had to learn in six months and really separated myself from, you know, from a lot of people that didn't want to, you know, um, have progress or whatever you want to call it. So I had they, to they, they weren't really hungry for it. They weren't really hungry, exactly. So I I was starving. I'm still starving to this day. You know, I'm still like, hey, what else? What's next? So I had to separate myself from that crowd, and it, it kind of hurt me because that's you know that's my people. You know, <laughs> right, right, right. But they weren't really uh, motivated. So I had to like really push myself out of that, and I started hanging out with like. A lot of black people, a lot of white people, a lot of Filipinos, whatever it was, just to hear them speak. And I started listening to a lot of Tupac as well. And I mm -hmm. memorized all the lyrics to his songs. And I used to go into the dictionary and be like, what does this mean? But of course, it doesn't teach you the slangs, right? So you're like, right, right, right. What does this mean? <laughs> and then I would just go to my friends and ask them, like, so what does this mean? Mm -hmm. And they will tell me, oh, it's this. This is the equivalent of that. And I was like, oh, I get it. And I used to, like, have to repeat it over and over and over again. <laughs> wow, and, interesting. Right. And it finally stuck in my head. But music, is it's a beautiful thing. And, and that's why I'm so good at representing musicians, because I fell in love with music since I was little, obviously. Um, and and it's, a, it's very interesting how this worked out, because when I used to listen to Tupac, right, it was in Mexico. Mm. That's the first I, time you heard Tupac was in Mexico. I heard California Love in Mexico. Wow. Wow. And I'm like, Damn, but but that's how powerful music yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. It has yeah. no language, it has no language barriers. I mean, you just feel it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's universal. Right. So I was just like, you know, okay, like this is this is dope. Like, I don't know who this is. I don't know what he's saying. 
But and, I, then, and then from there, how did you get into PR? But let's go back to the uh, philanthropic uh, stuff, the uh, community yeah. outreach. You just had me teach a class. I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much. I had the greatest yeah. time with uh, Freedom for Youth Organization. Yeah. Uh, I taught a class, a virtual class, and everybody got sweaty. But somehow I ended up more sweaty than everybody else. That was the that was the funny part. But it was <laughs> it was a great experience. So as far as community outreach, not only does Barbara uh, give a lot of herself, but she also makes sure her clients give back as well. And I appreciate that uh, from you. You know, uh, but anyway. You guys for doing that as well. You have no idea how, how much it means, not only to me, but to the kids, you know, and, and I, I really love that you did that because the kids were so excited to meet you. You know, once they see any kind of celebrity, right, just making it out to like things they've never been exposed to. Right, right, right. Yeah. So it's, it's important for them to see something so they can have a, a, a reference point, like there's something else out there because... A lot of times I was just on a, someone was interviewing me and I was saying a big problem with uh, the youth is that they don't see the alternative, but you're telling them to do something different that they never saw before. So it's very important that people who look like them, who came from the same communities that they came from, okay. come back and actually say something they can see them. So important. It's yep. so important. So crucial for the, for the kids to be inspired, to be like, because they come from the streets, you know, they, they were incarcerated. They were, you know I mean? Some of them don't have parents. They don't have their mom. They don't have their dad. So when they see somebody like yourself, because you yourself went through your, you know, on struggles mm -hmm, when you were mm -hmm. growing up and, and coming up in this industry, uh, it's so inspiring for them to see that. If you're the prime example of what these kids want to be, you know, when they grow up and they're, you know, they're like, oh my God, he made it. You know, yeah. I can do, you know, it's, it's, it's possible. This is really out there. Like this guy really made it. So, you know what I mean? So that's why I love to do this, um, you know, um, to help the charities and to like be involved in this kind of stuff because it really changes lives. You know, I yeah. have helped a lot of young girls with getting out of this like abusive relationships, you know, like to be able to see the red flags because sometimes we're so deeply in love with, you know, with the with the man that's abusing us that we don't really see beyond that. And it's, it's crazy. Um, and a lot of people always, you know, a lot of people from the outside that always like, oh, you are so stupid, like, how come you didn't see it? No, no, you weren't stupid. The thing is, is that you have a good heart. You're a good person. And you know what I mean? And you're just so loving, right? And you you probably lack some of that love when you were growing up that you don't know. Like sometimes when people just tell you, oh, you're beautiful, you're this, you immediately fall in love, right? You're like, oh my God, because right. you didn't have that. You know, I'm not saying myself, mm -hmm. but a lot of the girls that get involved into this abusive relationships, that's what happens. And so, so, you're, so, you're, so you're mentoring in, 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 in that regard as well. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I, you know, uh, is there a particular organization that you're that you're doing it through or that you want to mention right now? It was. Yeah, it, it's only well, it's through me, but I do work with a couple organizations mm -hmm. right now. Uh, right now, working with another one that specializes on immigrant women, too, that are oh, that's abused. A good one. Yeah, that are abused, you know, by, um, you know, guys, whatever, like, you know, that were born here, you know, that they brought them from overseas, you know, and just like they didn't even know that they had all this, you know, rights, legal rights. So I feel that that's so important because some of these women don't even speak English. They speak Filipino. They speak, you know, other right. stuff, languages, dialects even. You know, in Mexico, there's a lot of dialects, so they don't even speak Spanish sometimes. So it's so important for me to get back to those communities as well because those are the, the communities that don't get, don't get the light of the day. Well, nobody gets to see them. You know what I mean? They're just, they're just there and nobody really cares, like... And I'm not saying nobody, there's a lot of people that do care, but those are the minorities that nobody really gets to like give their hand to and be like, oh my God, like, oh, and then indigenous women too, you know, all of those demographics, Native Americans, you know, all those people sometimes don't, don't get a lot. Don't of get them. heard. Right. They don't get any shine. They right. Don't Absolutely. Have a voice. So we have to be the voice, you know, me and you are very privileged to be in that position where we can use our, you know, our public figure, celebrity, you know, status, whatever you want to call it. Um, to make a difference, right? To speak up and go out there and say, hey, listen, guys, please donate to this cause. Please, guys, vote for this. Please, guys, blah, 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 blah. Because the only way we can make a difference is if we position our, ourselves or our people into office. That's the only way we can make a difference in politics sometimes. Yeah. I don't want to get political, but you know. <laughs> and, 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 and you're absolutely right. And to do that, you actually have to have money. So it's, it's conscious capitalism. That's why it's so important for me to have people like you on here, especially as a woman, as a Latina, to tell people like, listen, you can make money, but then you can take that money and use it to affect positive change. You can use your sphere of influence to get your clients to donate to your charities so okay. you can help affect change 
and uh and, and it comes back to you tenfold 20 fold you know so it, it's it's yes. a great model it's a great model that uh I'm, I'm trying to promote that's the whole reason that we got the anabolic mind that's why we call it that because the mind is supposed to be in a state of growth you're supposed to be expanding you know and you're supposed to be ext expanding um on the uh financial level spiritual level and the physical level so let's talk about the uh physical level for you now so in your in your in your climb up right coming from mexico city how did you become a publicist and what was your diet and what was your knowledge about health and fitness back then uh compared to, to right now oh my god huge difference day and night like <laughs> when i got here oh my gosh so i was so skinny right when i got here i was like i probably weighed like maybe about 110 105 mm -hmm. 110. Mm -hmm. And the difference is like the food we all know in Mexico is all organic. It's like we grow the food, right? Like it's it's. No, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, Mexico is like a lot healthier than here. So the food is like wow. food different, right? So when you come here, there's a lot of pesticides. <laughs> there's a lot of you know, right. Yeah, yeah, and your body's not used to it because you're coming from Mexico. Right. That you mm -hmm. don't you don't even get to experience. Your body's not used to that. So. When I, when I came here, I gained immediately, I'm not lying to you, like maybe about 50 pounds in the what first three months. Damn, that, in the first three months? That's that's a lot? Like that. Wow. Like, and, and, you know, us, us Hispanics, we love tortillas. We love rice. Mm -hmm. We love we love carbs. But, you know, I grew up in, like, drinking coffee and, like, Mexican bread. <laughs> right, right, right. It's sim similar to the West Indian diet. A lot of yeah, bread, a like, lot, lot of heavy starch. Yeah, yeah. A lot of starch, right? So you know when you, it, it, but then again, it's a balance because my mom, my mom is a wonderful cook, and she's all about health. You know her, you know my mom. Mm -hmm. She's all yeah, about yeah. health. Barbara, Barbara's mom is ripped. We train. She's like ready for more every time. Every set, she's gangster. I love her. <laughs> she is so gangster. That's it. She goes hard. She goes hard. And she is so funny. She is so uh, amazing. But yeah, shout out to my mom. But you know, she's she's always been a wonderful cook. Anyways, with that being said, uh, when I got here, she was still a wonderful cook. But you know, she had to work with what she had. Right. And the, a lot of the ingredients she was trying to, you know what I mean? And she didn't understand yeah. the labels. You know, that's another thing that we struggle with at the beginning. But once she actually got the whole of it and we actually got the translate for her, she was like, oh my God, this is horrible. Like, what are mm -hmm. we eating? Um, but my physical, when I was in high school and uh, I was not fitness, it, it was non existent to me. I didn't mm -hmm. know what that meant. I had no idea. I mean, I played ball in college after, you know, like after I, I went to college, I did play basketball and I was like, mind you, I was not athletic at all right right I was not athletics but you know i i was always like i always loved the game um so i went to the coach right i i was like i used to go to the gym and i used to stand there and and just watch them and i was like damn i wish i could play like that this women are phenomenal like because you don't get to see that in mexico i mean you do but you know but the 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 physique everything that these girls have it's it's a whole different ball game i mean they're right, all right 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 so, <laughs> right, you know, right, right. So on everything uh-huh yeah, you're like, holy smokes, like, this girl's going to kill you right now if they really want to. So, you know, I was inspired by that. And uh, even though I never played, and I, I, I mean, I played with my cousins, but it wasn't, you know, whatever. Right, right. It wasn't serious. Right. And I'm thinking, oh, I could do this. Like, it's not that hard, you know, whatever. And then I go to the coach. And mind you, I was still learning English a little bit. I was my, my English was a lot, you know, rustier then. And I was like, uh, so I went up to him and I told him, I said, I want to play. I want to play. And he's like, have you played? And I'm like, yeah, I played. <laughs> <laughs> and like, okay. Yeah, right. And he's like, okay, well, he's like, well, come, you know, come to the practice tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, long story short, um, obviously he noticed I didn't play. Right, so right. So like, uh, you lied to me? And I was like, no, like I played, but it was a professional, you know. But anyway, so he actually ended up giving me the chance to to practice with the rest mm. of the team. And it was chaos and confusion at first because I did not understand what they were saying at times. Uh, and, language barrier. Right, language crazy. barrier. And, it, 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 and believe me, it's a whole like different lingo when, and when, you know, in the sports arena as well, because, you know, they use different concepts. Yeah, that's, that's a whole language in itself. Right. Exactly. So, you know, you, I had to learn the concepts too, everything. But, but anyways, I ended up actually playing. I actually end, ended up like learning. And, oh, wow. and I, but that, I was, that probably accelerated your English though, right? 
It did. It really did. And uh, and my physical and my diet actually went into a whole new level because I had him teach me a little bit more. Ah, I gave you a little nutrition. Okay. Nutrition part of it because, you know, now he's like, well, now you're going to be playing and traveling with us. Now you got to understand how we eat, what the workouts, you know, entail. And I was like, holy smoke. So I was looking good when I was in college. My legs were like old tone and stuff. And you know what I mean? But then after that, after like college, everything went back to like the drain because, you know, I wasn't thinking about playing professionally or anything. So I'm right. Like, so you stop playing ball. Right. So, you know, you don't keep up with like things sometimes. So you're just like, oh, okay, you go into something else. And then, you know, what, like five years passed by or whatever. And I, and then, and, and, then our ch- and then children. Yeah. And then I have children. <laughs> and then, yeah. after that, my goodness. And, I blew like a balloon. I was like, "Oh my god, I gained so much weight." And mind you, I had so what was your what was your weight gain? Would you say? Uh, with my well, it wasn't really that drastic to be honest, but it was a difference, obviously. Um, I think with my first one, I think I gained about like uh forty pounds. It wasn't bad. It was forty to fifty. Mm-hmm. It wasn't bad, honestly. But I did, but I did have uh, uh what is it called, gestational diabetes? Oh, where- okay. Yeah, where you could have diabetes, you're borderline, but because right. you're pregnant, you know, your insulin is actually working faster. Um, mm. So, right. So, okay. then, right. So then, so then when you got to me, right, when we finally met last year, okay. what kind of shape were you in and what kind of weight were you in? But before you answer that, <laughs> before you answer that, how did you get into PR? We never got to that part. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. See, I was like, I'm <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Another lane. Um, oh, yeah. No. Uh, well, how I got to PR. So when I, when I actually met this guy in my hometown in Oxnard and he was doing fashion shows and, uh, you know, uh, helping this guy with his clothing line. And it was called Devilish. And I was like, oh, OK. And so he approached me and he's like, hey, do you want to go with us to, you know, do sales or, you know, just go out there to promote? And I said, of course, you know, I want to be involved in the entertainment industry. So, of course, I want to go and network. Mm-hmm. I started doing that. And then the next thing you know, I became the, the top salesperson for this person and for the owner of the clothing line, which he never paid me, but it's all good. It was a learning lesson. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, I got to put him on blast. <laughs> we, we, all, we, we, we all have a, two or three of those stories in the industry. Yeah, a lot of those. But anyway, mm-hmm. so um, next thing you know, I started putting out uh, fashion shows. I, I was training the models. I was casting the models. And I was like, throwing a, a fashion show every week. And so people were like, damn, who is this girl? Like, and then they will come up to me and then I, I started meeting celebrities and, and mind you, I had to pay sometimes to get into clubs just so I would know and get to know the celebrities or the reps mm-hmm. or the managers. And I used to stand on the lawn, on the long lines at the, at the mansion. It was called the mansion back in the day in Hollywood. And I used to have to stand there and like flirt with the mansion. Man- Mm-hmm. You want to mention? Okay. I to mention. Yeah, yeah. How popular the place was, and it was very mm-hmm. exclusive. Like, so you all you had to know somebody to get you in. Like, you had to really be in in that place. But um, I made the the right connections throughout the years. And mind you, at this at the same time, I was working for McDonald's still. So wow. I would have to go to those clubs, right? Pay like fifty dollars to get in. And that was like yeah. your days, your days earnings for the day. Crazy. It was, yeah, it's crazy. And then I was I used to uh have to go home at one in the morning and then come back at like to open the store at four thirty in the morning. So sometimes it will be like a long night. Now we we'll just go straight to work. Mm-hmm. So real hustling, fam. So listen to what's going on. This is real hustling. And most people, you know, they don't really understand the background or the struggle that it takes to just see the superficial and they hate on people who are coming up who are doing their thing. But you don't know what that person is going through while they're coming up. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So always look at people empathetic, man, and know that anybody who's reached any type of status, especially any person of color, you know they're busting their ass, that they're earning it, you know? But I just wanted to put that out, but continue, please. Continue, please. You're absolutely correct. No, you're aiming aiming to that because that's just how it is. And and so, yeah, so, but anyway, so after that, some guy, you know, that, that used to be a publicist back in the day, Eric Sully, uh, which is, you know, somebody that mentored me and I'm very mm-hmm. thankful, um, you know, for, for his um, help. 
he was like, hey, you're the female version of me. Why don't you do publicity? And I was like, the hell is that? <laughs> right. Was, yeah, I looked at him like, okay, well, what is it? And he was like, well, you're already doing half of it. He's like, you know, you already got, you know, what it takes. You can talk to people. You can negotiate things. You're throwing events, you know, like, why don't you start having people pay you for those type of things? Because mind you, I wasn't charging anybody for anything. I had to prove myself. I used mm -hmm. to approach the celebrities and, you know, be like, I can work for you. I can do this for you. Da, 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 da. And, you know, one of those celebrities actually was uh, my good friend, Meloman Ace and um, the dog, you know, Rasco and Corrupt, you know, and uh, Be Real, who gave me the chance to be like, hey, let me let me give you, you know, something to do in the meantime. You know what I mean? While you mm -hmm. figure things out. But um, they used to actually hand me all these concert tickets and be like, hey, we'll see what you can sell and come back and, you know, we'll put you onto this, this and that. And I used to go and hustle those tickets too. But, um, you know, that's the story that I have. And I used to drive them to concerts too and things like that. Um, but basically, yeah. Basically, anything it took that got you exposure, experience, and put some money, you, you was doing it. Hustling, right. Real hustling. Yeah, same thing. Same thing when I came up. And a lot of people don't realize, you know, it's yeah. not about having. You could be the best at what you're doing, but if you don't get ex the exposure, you're not going to get the recognition. So a lot of times you have to give your services away. You know, like if you're going to, a lot of trainers DM me and uh, ask me for a job. Like, hey, listen, I want you to, I want to start working for you. This is what I expect to get paid, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, dude, I don't even, you know, you know. Right. We pay our dues. You right. Know? How's that working? Pay your dues, you know? So it, it's, um, it's, yeah. a, it's a, it's a, it's a lost thing in this generation, but at the same time, times are changing and you also can't be so stuck in the back where you don't realize that it's a different way to do things. So I think it's exactly. a balance at the same time because you don't have to bust somebody's balls for 10 years, just give them a break <laughs> at the same time. Right. You see that, and, and you see a lot of that happening, you know, too much paying dues, you know. Too much yeah, 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 no, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's, there's it, a certain it, way yeah, to yeah, there's definitely a balance both ways. So when you right. and I connected last year, what were you weighing in at and what are you weighing in at now? And talk about your training experience and how the wellness impacted your earnings with your job in the last year or so. Let's, let's say, yeah, let's do absolutely. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so just so the, the listeners know the background between you and I, so how we met, it was very interesting too, because it was through a clubhouse. You know, it was during coronavirus. And yeah, yeah, so that's right, that's right. Yeah, I was listening to this fitness segment on Breakfast with Champions because that's the name of the room. And shout outs to them because they're amazing. I met a lot of amazing people. Oh, yeah, a lot of cool people on Breakfast with Champions. Shout out to oh, Glenn. Yeah, cool Glenn Lundy. Yeah, Glenn Lundy, yeah. And Brielle, uh, Brielle too. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So and, I was and, and Alpha and Alpha Six, so many people. Yeah, so many people in that room. It was on like, that, yeah, in that room. It was two in the morning for us because that's on the East Coast, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. your hometown. But, you know, but I, it was worth it because we were not we were not sleeping anyways during coronavirus. No. Like, <laughs> right, you know, right. Everybody was up anyway. That's true. That is true. Yeah. So it, it worked out perfect. But but anyways, I turned in and, and you know they had another trainer and I was like, during coronavirus, I gained about like like sixty pounds easily because I was ordering DoorDash like every mm. single day, three times, four times a day, just because we didn't have anything to do. You know, so we're like. Right is in the house like i don't know what to do so food is really um you know what i mean like a consolation prize you're like okay you know i'm gonna get me a you know a burger or you know something and you're like oh my god this tastes so good so i couldn't stop and um but i finally said barbara like you i couldn't even fit into my jeans anymore or my you know my regular blouse, whatever, like I couldn't. And so I became really concerned, you know what I mean? Um, sorry about that. It became really concerning and I was like, oh my God. So I started doing, um, uh, I started making notes, taking notes, you know what I mean? On on mm -hmm. this other person. But then I forgot who introduced you to the, uh, to the room and they're like, oh, we have celebrity, you know, trainer Mark Jenkins. He's trained Busta Rhymes and Mary J. Blige. And I was like, whoa i'm like who is this guy <laughs> <laughs> and you came in and no offense to the other guy which i don't that's you know that's how people make an impact into your life because i didn't even i don't even remember his name right mm. but you took over after that and i was so fascinated by the way you spoke by how you really your knowledge and how you deliver you know the the speech when you were talking to us i was like 
I was like, oh, damn, like this guy knows his stuff. Like I could tell the difference between other, you know what I mean? Other people, uh -huh, even with uh -huh. the people speaking before you, I, you know, not like no offense to the other guy, but when you came in, you took over, you actually just said, okay, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even remember this. So I'm, I'm listening like, okay, well, I really, okay, that's cool. I know we met on Clubhouse, but I don't, I don't remember the uh, circumstances. But oh, I remember cool. the whole details to it because I'm telling so, you, that oh. changed my life. Wow. That changed so my you, life. So, so then you, right. you hit me after that, right? I hit you after that. So after <laughs> that, I, I sent you a DM on Instagram and I mm -hmm. said, I would love to work with you. And then you responded right away too, which was pretty cool because I was like, oh, I'm hoping and praying he answers. <laughs> right. And then you're like, Oh my God. Yeah. And then you said, Oh, you're a publicist. Right. And I said, yeah. And then you're like, well, I don't have a publicist. Well, I don't have a trainer. Oh my God. Well, let's work together. And so yeah, I remember yeah. we, scheduled, we scheduled a meeting right away. And okay, this is how dumb my mind is or whatever, like how naive I was uh, about fitness at that time, because <laughs> you're like, let's meet up. And I'm like, Oh, let me see what restaurant we can go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's funny. It's and funny. Then I'm like, we're and gonna we, go to a restaurant and discuss my fitness plan. And we met in the park. What did we meet right. in the park, right? Right. And then I had gone <laughs> to Phoenix to visit my kids, and you were like, Oh, I'll see you on Monday at like I think eleven or twelve. Mm -hmm. And I said, Holy smokes, I have to go. Oh my god, like he, he wants me to train right away. So I was like, Oh okay, I'm gonna have to get, get it over with. So I literally got up at five in the morning that day drove six hours to the park went straight to the park to see you and then we got we got into like the whole workout yep and um how long and how long we trained for we went for what that whole summer right three months yeah i think within three months to maybe possibly four yeah maybe um, four months straight and then i started traveling but to your credit you learned enough from the experience to be able to train yourself and take care of your own fitness and that's what i ultimately want with clients in the in the first place so that's that was awesome so what was your total fitness um loss weight loss muscle gain energy what was the transformation and how did that impact your business i definitely yeah i definitely lost like about 60 pounds uh my levels of energy went all the way up because i had no energy whatsoever all the food that i was eating was consuming that energy and draining me so when you taught me about nutrition it's just like it was a game changer for me. I was like, oh my God, now I can do this. And, and it's it's crazy because during that time I was moving to this new place from another place. And I was like, was I training for this? Because I could carry everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you told me. You said I could carry all the boxes. Yeah. I could yeah, carry yeah. all the boxes. So I was like, maybe God put Mark in my in my you know my life. Because it's like, girl, you're gonna be moving, you're gonna need to <laughs> So so how did your how did your appearance now affect the gig? Oh, it was a game changer because Mind you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm good looking. I'm not saying I'm the best looking out there. Right. But when I started training with you, like more guys actually started like, oh, like, you know, <laughs> I start checking. <laughs> I got more clients, too, because, and of course, male clients, obviously, because um, mm -hmm. they were like, oh, like if my publicist looks this good, then we can close more deals, you know, because that's how they really think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. Well, it's so, interesting. So, it's very interesting. Yeah. Right. so for your entrepreneur, and that's what I was telling you, too. I said, you know, most people who start training, their income actually doubles within a year or two of them exercising. And one of the reasons is because uh, they feel more confident. So whether the person is picking up on that vibe and then they're having more of a reaction or the person is reacting to your physical appearance or a combination of both, it's still, right. advantage it's still advantageous to you. You it, know it what I'm is. saying? One, one, one way or another, the extra energy that you have to keep on going. And, you know, the, um, the better you look, you're giving yourself more time functioning and optimal to be successful. So, you know, that's the, that's the big part. That's more important. That's most important to get out. Right. And another, another important point about this, like the looking good part too, is like when you walk in a room of people, they take you more seriously because they know that you're serious about your health. You're serious about your, you know what I mean? How, how you treat yourself and your body. So therefore they're like, Oh, this girl's really going to take care of me because she cares about herself. She looks good. She's, you know what I mean? She's putting mm -hmm. in the gym. So, and then so, you know, so, mentality too. So just like me, you've been on both ends of the spectrum. You've been overweight and then you've been in shape. Yeah. And uh, so you recognize that there's a social, a certain social bias, right? 
oh, to yeah. people who are, uh, are perceived as more attractive or more fit than other people. Now, do you notice like there's a backlash now where people like I'm out of shape and it's fine and I can do that? Do you, do you see as a publicist more artists now resistant to getting in shape? How do your artists perceive fitness? Is it something that they're resentful towards doing or something that they're embracing to do for the most part? I mean, like generally speaking. Generally speaking, you know, uh, they do res resist it. They're like, you know, I don't need to look like that. Like, it's all about my talent. It's all about, you know, what I can bring to the table. But, you know, unfortunately, it's not like that. You know, everybody that walks in, they either walk in into a, a you know, record label or they walk in into like a, you know, audition or whatever it is for a movie. They need to look good. You know what I mean? Unless they're looking for that specific, you know, demographic where they're, a little bit more, you know, they have a little bit more meat or more, you know, fuller, you know, bodies or whatever, whatever it is. But the, you know, the the, the honest truth in, in Hollywood, you know what I mean? They 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 judge you by how you look. It's yeah, it, it, it's it's a it, it's interesting. Yeah, it's because uh, when I was training D'Angelo, you know, uh, for the uh, Voodoo tour, you know, yeah, the women would just start screaming, "Take it off! Take it off! Take it off!" And for him, who's a serious artist. Yeah. It was upsetting to him, you know, yeah. so he'd, he'd do the show, be like, yo, I'm trying to get my music up and talking about what I look like. And I'm like, but listen, the arena's full. Yeah. That's what I, that, that was my counter back to him and we will go back and forth. So, you know, there's no right or wrong answer to that, I don't think, but people right. are attracted, you know, visually to what they're attracted to. So, you know, I, right. I think everybody has that bias to a certain extent. Of but course. it's just like, it's just like you, you go into school, you go to school, you get a degree, then you say, okay, I'm going to stay a little bit longer to get an advanced degree. So you have more of an advantage in business. That's the same thing people are looking at when it comes to getting in shape. You know, if I'm here, I get a certain advantage, but if I'm here, I get a little bit more advantage in business if I'm in shape. And uh, that's how you should look at it if you're not into exercise and fitness, at least look at it as an entrepreneurial tool to advance you. You know, right. it's, good, it's good for your health anyway, so why not? Your health, anyways, right? And it, it you know, in a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, record labels and a lot of other, like I said before, too, other you know, uh, movie sets. I mean, not movie sets, uh, movie projects, whatever. Casting people, like they look at that as also as a marketing strategy to attract more people to either watch a movie or, you know, what I mean, like come to the concerts or whatever. I mean, the the, the person needs to be physically, you know, in shape and attractive enough for you know what I mean for people to to want to go see them too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a it's a it's a funny it's a funny and it's a sensitive subject to people because a lot of people feel like you know there's, it, there's, it, there's, it, there's, it, there's there's a bias and I and I posted about that last week. Um yeah. I forgot the um the term there is a term for that um ism it's a something ism <laughs> not good look ism <laughs> but no that's not it that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it though. You just but, came up but, with a new concept. <laughs> yeah, I know I came up with a new term, but that, that's not the one. But yeah. I was gonna, but I was gonna ask you, why is it important for people who are not like celebrities to utilize a publicist, especially in this uh, uh, game of social media? Because I know a lot of entrepreneurs watch uh, the Anabolic Mind Show, and for you entrepreneurs out there who are looking for that advantage, why is it important for someone to look into having a publicist like you, especially in the age of? Uh, People needed to get verifications and, you know, all, all that type of stuff. How does that play into it? Yeah, that plays a major role. I mean, having a publicist is really a, a top notch, you know, thing that you got to have. I mean, you it's, it's a necessity nowadays. And even with social media, even with all the resources we have on TikTok, you know, Twitter, whatever it is, uh, Instagram, you still need to have someone that's really going to go in um, and, you know what I mean, and, and request an interview or put you in a place where you will never be able to get into yourself because you wouldn't even know where to begin. And plus, you're the talent. You're not supposed to be struggling with those type of things. You know what I mean? So it's so important for people to actually realize the importance. And again, I always tell everybody, this is not an expense. Just just how you train people for, you know what I mean, for tours, you know, whatever it is. That's what they pay you your, you know, what they what, what you're worth because it's an investment. It's not an expense. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with us. Like we're we're the key to all the doors. We give you the visibility that you need. We give you all the um, all the resources. We close deals for you. We we put on the good fights. You know what I mean? We we put on the 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 
hard phone calls like that you wouldn't even know how to handle yourself or you don't even have time for any of that so it's so crucial that people have that you know in their yeah you need someone who actually has that relationship with the person you're trying to get at you know and that's the yeah. biggest thing with the publicist you know uh that i that i've had through the years i may know the person because a lot of times i do know the person but i don't know them in that capacity and sometimes yeah. it's, and, and most of the time it's awkward to be pitching yourself <laughs> You know, and you and you know somebody socially. So although I might actually have the connection, whereas the average person wouldn't have the person's uh, number in their phone book, it's just awkward for me to call them and try to say, "Hey, put me in a magazine." When I know them on a buddy, on a different type of capacity. So sometimes you need the publicist to come in and say, "Hey, you know, that's your boy. I'm trying to do A, B, C, and D," and uh, I, I find it very beneficial in in, in that regard for someone yeah. who's, who's just an entrepreneur who doesn't have that name. Right. recognition you definitely look need to look into getting into magazines and publications so uh in, in that regard a publicist is super correct you have to have the right press i mean there's so many misconceptions about verifications on instagram people think it's about the followers some people think it's about you know different aspects and it has nothing to do with your followers you can have three followers but you have to have top tier press in order for them to actually approve you right so right. there's so many things that your publicist can do to get you to that level which i do i get the, the clients ready uh, you know, so in order for them to, you know, apply through the app or, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, like we we're really good at my team and I are really good at doing that. And we have verified over 200 accounts just by getting them the right press, you know, because some people don't even know. And some yeah. people think some people have been um, uh, misled by all the other people, their agencies, other people that come to them and like, oh, I can get you verified for this much. I can get you da, 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 da. And then they end up, you know, getting scammed or whatever it is. So it's so important to have a publicist that understands social media, that understands how business works, how understands like the importance of even how you said, even if you are buddies with somebody, if, you know, among celebrities, just because you're buddies with them doesn't mean that, you know, automatically you're going to have to, I mean, the relationship is there, but that doesn't mean that automatically you guys are going to Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Business is separate at the end of the day. So that's why they invented us people <laughs> to come in and, you know what I mean, and, and talk it out, negotiate, and then you guys can, you know, take it from there. But um, but at the end of the day, it's it's so important to have somebody like, uh, like us, publicists, managers, you know, uh, marketing people, because we understand how the formulas work. We know yeah, you, you, you need a team. You need a team. You definitely need a team. And, uh, you know, right. and, uh, and a good teams are hard to find. So when you have a good team member, you know, definitely take care of them. Where, yeah. where, do, you, where do you see yourself um, five years from now? Where five years from now. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's yeah. around the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It goes fast. It goes fast. It goes fast. Well, my goal is to open another um, another office, another publicity office in New York City. And um, within the, the within the, the next five years and also Paris. Paris has been uh, a very... Um, a crucial point for me as well because I, I do want to expand myself globally and um, I'm already doing that because I'm thinking about Mexico obviously that's my you know that's my, my right. country. Uh, but I want to definitely expand more glo more globally and I want to do Paris because I feel like Paris is another mecca of you know entertainment so where, where I want to go is you know fashion week um, and you know Paris Fashion Week and, you know, work with all this like uh, designers like, you know, uh, Versace, Donatella. That's a big inspiration to me. I feel you. Uh, yeah. So, you know what I mean? So just kind of have that, um, you know, more of an expansion on my on my business and, and personally, you know, just continue to look good. <laughs> right. I right. Play low when I'm 50. So. <laughs> yeah. And maybe uh, maybe you get a. Um... You get a marathon, a half marathon. I'll, I'll put one out there for you. Maybe you get a goal. You know, that's that's a good look for a publicist to have ran a marathon. So maybe you get a marathon in. It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's good bragging rights, yeah. Oh yeah, that would be sick. If I, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Lord, good to add to the resume. You know, do New York, do New York marathon. Yes, yes. Oh my God, I am so down for that. That'll be like the ultimate like thing for me because you know it's been. You know me, you already know me. And so it's like, uh, you know, when I when I first met you and everything, I didn't even know how to turn my neck. Like, you remember how we were doing? Yeah, that? working on body awareness. Bar yes. Barbara has come such a long way and such a good student. She couldn't isolate muscles. She couldn't rotate shoulders and turn neck at the same time just from not training, you know, and not using the body. So uh, but she embraced uh, all the functional training I had her doing with reaction balls and 
bands and jumping rope and just trying to get her to feel where she was in space. And now your movement is 100% better. So I'm so happy uh, about that, you know? No, thank you so much. You did a great I job. It. No, thank you. It was a team effort, you know? At the end of the day, you know, you're teaching, but uh, but so it's so important also the motivational and the mental thing, you know, because there's a lot of trainers that I trained with before and they just worry about the physical and like, they don't teach you how to eat. They don't teach you how to like really mentally, you know, um, get there. Because even when me and you were working out, you like, now that I'm like squatting right on the, on the rack or whatever, like I think about, you always tell me like, you know, put your weight on, you know, certain, you know, on, on your ankles or whatever. Right. And right. Because I didn't think that I was doing it with my legs. I was thinking with my legs, right. I was like, okay. Uh, but then once you said that and certain things that you adjusted when we were working out that I never even thought about or like putting my tongue on, on top of my roof. To, when like, your neck muscles, yeah, to activate right. when you're doing your crunches, right? So oh, I'm glad you remember that. That's awesome. Yeah. No, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that was thank you to me. You know, it was so job. fascinating. Thank you. It was so fascinating that I do that all the time now. It's, mm. it's a habit that I have acquired thanks to you. And it has helped me tremendously when I work out now. I'm like, oh, yeah, so guys, look, if a lot of people experience neck strain when they're doing crunches and stuff. It's because they don't have a, their neck muscles activated. And also they don't train their neck. So very important. I posted about that too. Uh, check my IG. But if you right. keep your tongue to the roof of your mouth, your neck muscles are activated. So you don't feel as much neck strain when you're doing your, your crunches. Uh, and I'm so glad you remembered that tip. So, you know, like I said, Barbara was an awesome student and really was – Hungry, you can hear her hunger and how she approaches uh, every little uh, aspect of her life. So that's why she's successful. So I really wanted you guys to, you know, to, to get that out of. If nothing you got from this interview, you know, definitely uh, appreciate the hunger and try to model yourself after that because you're a great, uh, great role model. Thank you, Mark. Know? Likewise, likewise. We're gonna, we're Bye gonna, we're yeah. gonna. Thank you so much. We're gonna close it out. But is there anything else you want to say to people? You got some Latina sisters out there or women in general about um, the industry or saying you can't achieve your goals or being a single parent or any of that stuff? You want to give anybody some inspiration right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, yeah. Don't let anybody tell you that, you know what I mean, that you're not good enough for something. I was told with like my whole entire career life that I wasn't good for, you know, to break in the industry. I'm the first Mexican woman, not only Latina, but I'm the first Mexican woman to actually break into the hip hop industry. And wow. that's ruthless. That's ruthless. It's, you know how ruthless it is. In yeah, this yeah, 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 that's real. It's definitely so real. I earn the respect, you know, but um, but my, my number one advice is like, always pace yourself. Um, for every bad, you know, bad situation that you encounter, it doesn't mean that you're not going to make it. It means that it's opening a door for something else. So every time you actually encounter like disappointment or somebody says no to you, use that as fuel to actually, you know, get you mad and be like, oh, yeah, well, let me turn this into a yes. Like, what do you mean? No. So, you know what I mean? So use that instead of actually letting you, you know, knock you down. Use that as, as motivation and, and don't let nobody come to your head and tell you, oh, like you're not good for that or you're not you're not going to make it or because you, you know, you don't have enough, whatever. So just keep going and don't let nobody get in your ear. You know what I mean? And when you get depressed, hit the gym. <laughs> hey, good one, good one, good one. Hey, that's hit what's the up. Because that, that's what's been keeping me sane because I, I have depression as well. So uh, whenever I get into my little funk, you know, I go to the gym and, and that really, really helps me a lot. And um, yeah, just, you know, just keep going no matter what people say. You know what I mean? Because anybody, if I can make it, if I made it, I'm yeah, still anybody yeah, can make yeah, it. Anybody can make it. I always tell people that. Well, Barbara, right. thank you. Thank you so much. It was great to have you on. Tell your mom. I said, what's up? I'm looking yeah, forward to, uh, to busting her up again. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outro us right now. Hang on. Fam, I hope you got something out of this. You know, you got any questions or comments, you know, DM me. Hit Barbara up. Uh, and peace and love. Watch your diets. Implement fitness into your lifestyle. Go hard, fam. One. Yes. This broadcast is brought to you by Winject Studios. We are an all-in-one educational platform for podcasters that revolutionizes how hosts leverage content to increase engagement with listeners, downloads, and income. We come together to focus on community, collaboration, and collective impact. For more information on how you can interact directly with our hosts, access exclusive live content with offers you can't get anywhere else from our official partners, join our purpose-driven community by visiting www.winject.com. If you're ready to build a career doing what you love, then we're ready to see you there.